Hi there, my name is Bobber, and I'm going to be showing you right now how I edit this image of mine titled Prism using just Capture One Pro 11. So the first things first, what I do is I make sure that my chromatic aberration is selected just to make sure there are no uh, artifacts or no you know difference in color uh, happening on the edges, which looks good here. So and then what I do is I go back to my custom made panel, which I made over here. Um, and the first thing what I do is I make sure to uh, straighten this image because I was standing on the roadside and I had to capture this, you know, out of the blue. So I just had to, you know, be, be on the go at that time. So the first things we do is we select the Keystone Vertical tool, which we have over here. So when you right click over here, you can see the various options, but we're going to select the first one in this case. And we align the edges to the buildings, as you can see I'm doing here. Yep, looks good. All right, after we're done doing this, we simply click Apply. And it will automatically straighten your image, as you can see here. The highlighted portion shows the area that is visible, while the, while the darkened area shows the area that has been cropped out. Now we go back to our cursor tool by clicking select <clears throat> or select the select tool and we're back to our image image over here. So now that we have straightened this image, the next step would be to create masks in order to separate the foreground buildings, which are these four in this case, with the Bush Khalifa we have in the backdrop with the beautiful reflection that's happening. The best way to create a mask in my case is to go to go to the color editor tool, pick a color in the advanced tab, zoom in, and let's say I select this color here. Boom. Now it shows you the area of the colors that are being selected. So I select the full spectrum by dragging it out and increase the smoothness. And now this is one area which I need to explain a bit. Since uh, since the uh, in order to make sure that we are affecting all the colors that exist in the building the best way to or like what I prefer to do in this case is that I select every other color except for the blue hues except for the blues so I just stretch this out just to make sure we've colored the full spectrum okay let me bring this down here and now let's see what and now if you want to see the areas that have been selected, so you click on the view selected color range. And we've managed to cover basically most of it, but some of it is missing, which we'll have to mask out later. And I'll show you how to do that. So once we've done this, let's see what happens when you when you increase the lightness or decrease the brightness. You see that? It shows you the area that that the foreground, in this case the building, is being affected but let's put that to zero and now what we do is we will create a mask based on this color which we have we can say create mask layer from selection boom now a new layer has been made with that mask and we will label, label this as foreground. Now let's see what the mask looks like. So you click M and you can see that it's done a pretty decent job in terms of selecting or in terms of um, covering the foreground buildings but there, we still need to tidy it up to make it much better. So the best way to go about it is by using the brush tool. In this case, I select B, which is the brush tool, which is here. And I increase the brush size. And I start masking away the areas which are not masked. And make sure that your auto mask is selected. I'll bring my brush size down a bit. There we go. Now we have finally managed to create the mask for the foreground as you can see here. Now the next step would be 
make the changes we need in order to mute the, the buildings in the foreground. So click M to unmask, to get rid of the mask we had. And the first, set, first thing we do is we, what I would do here is reduce the exposure down a bit, not too much. Reduce the saturation, just slightly, not too much. Add a bit of blue to the shadows because I believe that really differentiates the background from the foreground and would really help, and even the midtones. Yep. Looks good. I think let's see before and after. Before and after. Before and after. Yep. I like it the way it is right now. Maybe what would be best is now is to add a sh small curve adjustment and bring down the midtones while maintaining the highlights. Oops, I forgot one thing. We only want to affect the luminosity, so we bring down that without affecting the color. Bring this up so that the top parts of the building brighten up a bit. I think that's good. Awesome. Now that we've selected, now that we've made the basic adjustments to the foreground, it's time to make adjustments to the backdrop in which we have Bush Khalifa. And now we have to create a mask for that. And since we already have a mask created for the foreground, the best way to create a mask for the backdrop, I create a new layer. And name this layer background, which is completely empty at the moment. So there's nothing there. There's no mask that's been made yet. And now what we do is we have the background layer selected and we simply hit copy from foreground, which was the previous layer we made. Now it's created that same layer we had on the previous one on this one. But we need to invert it because we need to affect the backdrop. So now we click again over there on those three dots and hit invert mask. There we go. Now we have the Bush Khalifa backdrop selected. A bit of the building is selected and the glasses are selected, that's fine. Uh, th that won't make much of a difference to our final image. So now we will hit M again to get rid of the mask and start making adjustments to the Bush Khalifa. Bring down the Exposure a notch, increase the contrast. And the beauty about using the contrast slider in this case is that since it's a smart contrast, it only affects the luminosity and not the color value of the pixels. And let's set it at 25, which is good. And this is my favorite tab, the clarity slider. I usually will put the clarity at um, you can take it up if you want, but I think a 60, 69.70 would do. Yep. Hit the before and after to see. Or we'll just uncheck and check the mask to see how much of a difference we've made. That looks pretty dramatic. It's done a good job so far. And one thing on the clarity slider is I would prefer a neutral because as you can see, I like the contrast it's giving here near the reflection, so that's why I prefer neutral in this case. And plus the colors aren't being affected as well. Now that we've made the adjustments that needed to be made to build the background and the foreground, the next step would be to make some final adjustments to the global, uh, to the global adjustments, so making the overall adjustments to the entire image. So in this case, what we do is we create a new layer and we name this final touch. 
And since we don't have a mask on this layer already, so we just simply invert it so that the entire image is selected. And we hit the curve tool. And we go to, uh, I think in this case, let's do RGB because I want a bit of the color to be affected. And looks good. Bring it up over here. Just bring it up a bit more. And bring up the blacks. That's fine. Looks good. Let's see before and after. Yep, I like that. And as a final step, I'll vignette the image and add some vignette to the image. But you have to remember that the vignetting affects the background layer and not the final touch up. But it's the last step I usually take when I'm editing my images. So I have the method elliptic on crop tool selected and I simply bring down Yep, I think it looks good. Maybe just to increase the exposure value a bit because it's just a, a bit dark, or actually the brightness in this case. I think that looks good now. So voila, so here is the final image that we have created. And just to give an overall review, to see how far we've come, we simply right click and create a new variant. to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is your before and that's your after. I hope you guys enjoyed this session and learned a lot from it. And do apply these, uh, these techniques and skills that I, which I did right now onto your images as well. And I would love to see what you can do. And thank you so much for watching this video.